It's showtime, everybody. I'm Rob Wu, and this is Pancras, Legends of Mixed Martial Arts. And sitting alongside me, as always, our expert analyst. You might know him as the babyface assassin. I just call him the big guy. It's Josh Barnett. It's always wonderful to be here, and now we're moving right along into some of the further matches of Pancras and even closer to establishing their first champion. Now, I've always wanted to ask you, Josh, how did you get that nickname? Uh, not by any means of my own, but uh, a promoter, TJ Thompson of Super Brawl, and my uh, old trainer, Matt Hume. I had just cleaned uh, everybody's clock in this big uh, heavyweight tournament down in Hawaii. And I was making my return back for a super fight uh, against the legendary Dan Severn. And because I was all of 21, 22 years old, and uh, I, I looked like I was probably about 16, they decided they came up with the nickname of the baby-faced assassin. And uh, at first, I was a little uh, hesitant about it, but the thing with nicknames is you don't get to choose them, they give them to you. But you got a pretty good one. I suppose so, but as I get older, I don't think I can keep it forever. I think in their hearts, you will always be the baby-faced oh. assassin. Well, that's very sweet of you to say, Rob. All right, enough of that. Let's go to the <laughs> fighting. It's Katsumi Inagaki versus Yoshiki Takahashi, our first matchup. Any insights on this, Josh? Well, Takahashi aggressive as, as all heck. Uh, he's going to come right out the gate, and I'm sure he's going to focus primarily on a striking attack. Uh, Nagaki, really known for his toughness. I think he's going to try and weather the storm and look for the submission at some point. Uh, maybe use a, a little bit of a cooler head and hoping that Takahashi is going to make a big mistake. All right, let's find out how this fight unfolds. Yoshiki Takahashi versus Katsuomi Inagaki. This fight taking place at the Yokohama Cultural Gymnasium, uh, 5,645 people on hand to watch this. Now, Yoshiki Takahashi, his record is just 2-2. Two and two. Might not be that impressive, but if you look at his losses, he's lost to Shamrock and Funaki, uh, not just two regular stiffs. No, really, uh, the cream of the crop of the organization. And uh, Katsumi Inagaki, you see right there, is 1-3. And, three. and uh, we, last week, we saw him basically pass out versus Suzuki, a bad, devastating loss. Right, uh, but as, as uh, his record would indicate, he, he's, he's on the losing side of things at this point, but uh, Inagaki would uh, be a stalwart of Pancras and continue to, to fight on and actually do quite well. And Inagaki looking very aggressive to start, but Takahashi has a hold of him and takes him down. And surprisingly, Takahashi is who I'd expect to come right out the gate throwing leather and instead. Finishes with a double leg takedown and now going into the face lock here. And Nagaki trying to continue to relieve the pressure by turning. And he seems to have wiggled out, Josh. But, yeah, he, but, he got, he, yeah, but Takahashi persists and he has that hold again. Takahashi seems really hell bent on, on getting a uh, on face lock on Nagaki at this point. Uh, right now, keeping the back control, a one on one wrist ride, and uh, just staying behind him and continuing to work the face. Inagaki maybe trying to stand up, but Takahashi not allowing him, keeping this fight to the mat. Does Takahashi have the advantage when this fight goes down to the mat? Well, Takahashi really needs to keep things uh, uh, moving and, and has to keep his opponent reacting because Takahashi is a very physical, aggressive wrestler, whereas uh, some of the other fighters like Spinaki are very uh, more of an IQ type fighter. And we see right there, does, is Takahashi close to getting that choke hold on? Well, it's hard to say. His position's a little off. But uh, certainly Inagaki has to be sure not to let Takahashi sink that arm across the throat or this match is done. And we've seen Inagaki uh, lose to a chokehold before, so he is prone to that. And right now, it looks like Inagaki got back on top, but a tough break. The fight gets towards the rope and the refs break it. It looks like Inagaki, he just saw some, he just saw some daylight and the ref took it away. Yeah, leading with the middle kick and uh, following up with a shote, uh, Takahashi inside low kick, middle kick, but losing his balance and ending up on the ground. Whoa, right there. We almost saw Inagaki throw a kick to Takahashi while he's on the ground. That is not legal, Josh. Exactly. Uh, I think he pulled up a little bit and the ref noticed that uh, you know, it wasn't too much serious of an infraction. Once again, Takahashi going for the takedown and gets it. But once again, the fighter is close to the rope and a very wise move by Takahashi, moving Inagaki towards the center of the ring, where if he would to put on a submission hold, Inagaki cannot grab the ropes to escape. Right, just like this cross arm scissor he just set up right there. Great position for Takahashi. Really difficult position for Inagaki. But if he's smart and he, and, he, and he realizes his position, he knows that he might be able to get to a rope in case things get really dire. And if Inagaki lets go of his left arm, I think this fight will be over. I agree, I agree. He's in a dangerous position and he's in the near finish right now, so he has to be careful. And there he does grab the rope. 
Takahashi momentarily got the armbar, but since Inagaki grabs the rope, he loses one point. But he does have five points remaining, so he's not in terrible shape sure. yet. Sure. Good presence of mind. He did lose a point, but he's still in the fight. Both fighters exchanging kicks. Takahashi now striking with the palms. Inagaki trying to keep him close to prevent those strikes. Not sure if it's working. Takahashi now throwing knees. And another takedown. Takahashi looks like he's got a game plan coming into this. Yeah, he really seems to be uh, to setting up uh, some, some big strikes on the feet, but always finishing with the takedown. Uh, specifically a double leg with an outside leg sweep and getting the top position against Inagaki. And it looks like Takahashi going for another rear naked choke. This is the same move that he lost to Minoru Suzuki with. That's true. And Inagaki is in much better position here. If he keeps turning to his left, punch his elbow across just like he did. Now he's on top, half guard to a side control position and now uh, working a headlock and looking to isolate one of his arms. Now, uh, do you think the crowd will root Inagaki on simply because he's the underdog in this fight so far? You know what? In Japan, that's a very common thing. The underdog uh, will receive even more support than, than uh, what you might expect. And I'm sure, if anything, the fans are really looking forward to Inagaki uh, finding some success. And explain to us a little bit, what are the fighters doing right now? Well, Inagaki is working for a double wrist lock there, and he was driving his knee into Takahashi's grip, trying to break it free. Oh. Going for the toehold, uh, Takahashi read the move from a mile away and snatched up the sleeper choke on Inagaki. And Inagaki, and Inagaki loses another point. That's two down, three to go. Certainly a strong showing from Takahashi so far. And a nice right leg kick by Inagaki, but it looks like Takahashi just absorbed it and took him down again. Yeah, uh, it was a good high kick by Inagaki, but not quite enough muster on it. Uh, Takahashi had his hand up and was able to transition into a Achilles lock on the takedown. Now here going into the heel hold. Oh my, it looks like Inagaki's ankle is twisting in all sorts of directions it doesn't belong in. Yeah, that's a pretty nasty looking. I know if it was me, I would already, my knee would already be in pieces, but uh, Inagaki is a pretty limber fellow. And he manages to slip out of that. Give him some credit. Certainly no one's going to question Inagaki's toughness or resolve in this match. Takahashi with the side control. Again working the cross face, looking for a, perhaps a choke and or a face lock. I think that choke is coming. It looks like Takahashi is getting close to applying that choke, but no oh, Inagaki yeah. wisely oh, yeah. manages to turn his body around. Takahashi, so uh, looks like he's still maintaining a, a half guard position, uh, perhaps thinking about knee bar or Looks like a uh, shote right across the face on the ground there. Hand control by Takahashi, continuing to ride uh, Inagaki's hips and keep him flat on the mat. Uh, working it again across the neck here is Takahashi. Uh, I think he... Going for another chokehold. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, and it looks like he might have it on. And it looks like he does have the rear naked choke on. Inagaki's face, this is the same face we saw against Suzuki. And now, he, I think he has passed out, Josh. Again, the same choke, the short choke, which is not a full sleeper as some, most people are used to seeing, but driving that forearm bone straight across the trachea, uh, getting the job done. Now, Josh, uh, Katsumi Inagaki, he lost to a formidable, uh, formidable opponent, Takahashi, no one to snore at. But now Inagaki's one in four. How much does it hurt his confidence to lose in this fashion for the second time? If I'm Inagaki's trainer, I've got to sort of pinpoint the root of his problems and, and see why does he keep making the same mistakes. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, the end of the world to give up your back position like that in these fights, but Naki keeps getting caught in the same thing over and over. He's really got to practice on knowing when his opponents are going to reach for his neck, getting hand control, keeping his chin down. And maybe if I'm Inagaki, what I'm going to do is, uh, if I know people are going to go after my neck because they've seen that I've lost this way, maybe I should try start learning ways to, to use that advantage uh, of people attacking my neck and use it as my own way to, to set up a counter. We'll see if he improves on that in the later weeks. All right, when we come back for break, it's Andre Vande Utlar versus Vernon Tiger White.